The meeting week of Parliament got started this morning with a meeting with the Minister of Finance and that meeting was actually a meeting requested by three members of Parliament regarding the financial situation of the country during the past six months or at least the first half year rather. Coincidentally, the report by the Minister on the past six months slash first quarter of 2017 was received by Parliament on Friday. So this very actual report could have been part of the discussions with the Minister of Finance. So again, while the request did not have to do with that report because it was not yet received when members of Parliament requested a meeting, it's now in possession of Parliament as well as the reaction to that report by the CFT. And so several members of Parliament were able to further query the Minister regarding the comments by the CFT. As has been reported already, the reaction of the CFT to the first, in fact I'm saying first quarter, it's actually first half year of 2017, is quite good, the reaction that is, as the CFT sees a positive trend as far as the finances of the country are concerned. Some interesting facts that come out of the report and which have also been highlighted by the CFT are, for example, the lower than budgeted personnel cost. A big part of this has to do with vacancies not being filled as projected during or in the budget. So one of the questions that immediately come to mind, because this information is not provided in the report that we received from the minister, in which ministries have these personnel savings been realized? So in other words, where have these vacancies not been filled. The report that we get on usually a quarterly basis, but in this case due to the ICT issues that the government faced, we too, just like the CFT did, we received the reporting by the government for the first half year of 2017. And again, these are total figures, so you would see the total number of per or total amount of personnel cost vis-a-vis -vis what was budgeted for a half year in 2017. As a rare thread throughout the report is also mention of the ICT issues that the government have been facing. This has been a very taxing situation, no pun intended, for the Ministry of Finance that has to make these reports and have all of the information regarding what has been collected so that a comparison can be made with the budget and this overall financial picture can be reported to the Parliament of St. Martin and the CFT, which is a requirement by law. We also learned from that report what the government is doing with respect to its capital budget. A question that came from that, that report on the capital expenses is of course the recently granted loan by the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin for 21 million guilders and the question was posed to the minister as to what exactly that is destined for. Amounts that have been included in the report that makes the report look good uh, for example, the amount due from GEBE as well as from a foundation that goes back to the Netherlands Antilles time, and that is a foundation economic development, as it is called, SEO. These amounts have been included in the first half year report. However, they have not been yet received so in the coming months, these amounts will have to be received in order to show that what has been projected will actually materialize to be the case. 
So that too was a question, a question raised, and the Parliament of St. Martin is looking forward to receiving in the not too distant future, and the minister is very hopeful where it is concerned, the draft budget 2018, as well as the first amendment to the 2017 budget, which is also due, and where we will see whatever has transpired that the government would need to amend its 2017 budget for. So these were some of the, the highlights, again, from the report. The meeting of today, Monday, will continue this coming Thursday at 10 a.m., at which time the minister will then come and respond to the questions raised by members of parliament. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Telcel, when you Want more? Need a loan that's quick and easy. Island Finance. Up to 50,000 guineas real easy. Island Finance. For education, yes. a renovation. Yes. That's no problem. Ooh. Yes, it's true. That's not all. They're quick and friendly too. Island Finance. Appliances, vacations, even fix your car. You can depend on Island Finance. Win yourself a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. Get your tickets for the Gold Green Car Raffle and win a brand new Toyota Prius C. Tickets only $10. Get your tickets today. The more tickets you get, the more chances you have. Friday, Sunday, October 8th. Tickets available at Van Gogh Bedien, Madame Estate. Big D's for the studio on the Pornfield. And from all Lion members and at the Lion's Den. Get Get your tickets to win a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. The faction leaders of the Parliament of St. Martin are supposed to meet. As the name implies the faction leaders meeting is a meeting of the four faction leaders in parliament. It is in this setting where we discuss things relevant for the functioning of parliament. For example, on the agenda would be the matter of the opening of the new parliamentary year, um, the speakers, the time allotted to speakers, the procedure during the, the, um, the opening, we have the closing, of course, and the next day, the opening of Parliament in September. And coming back to the agenda of Parliament, we have on the same Tuesday tomorrow, August the 15th, we have invited on their request, Dow's Musical Foundation, who will come to Parliament and present his foundation, the work of his foundation, 
to the members of parliament. On that same Tuesday, we will continue the discussion on the draft law administrative enforcement. This particular draft law has been on the agenda of Parliament. It has been already discussed and the Central Committee meeting of this draft law will continue on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. This particular draft law is or will be defended, so to speak, by the Minister of Justice as it falls under the Minister of Justice and he's expected to be in Parliament on Tuesday. Continuing on Wednesday, we have a committee meeting and that's the Committee of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Telecommunication and Transportation. And in that committee meeting, which will be held at three o'clock, we have a presentation by the AUC, the American University of the Caribbean, and they have asked if they can come and present to Parliament what they have analyzed to be the contribution of AUC to the overall economic development of St. Martin. So that university, representatives of that university will be here and will be making a presentation to Parliament. As I mentioned earlier, we have the continuation of the meeting that was started today with the Minister of Finance. That will continue on Thursday, Thursday morning to be exact. And then in the afternoon, we will have again the continuation of a central committee meeting, this time having to do with the changes to the civil code regarding the matter of labor. And I think I need to explain what is currently before Parliament. It was back in late 2015 that Parliament received a draft proposal to change the civil code to include the matter of or create a special book in the civil code for labor. And so that the only thing what was taking place there is that the matter of labor would have been given its own book in the civil code. Since that presentation of that amendment to the civil code, which is quite comprehensive by the way, but since that initiative or the draft reached parliament, you had the Minister of Labor Social Development and public health having discussions with social partners on the matter of overall labor reform. Those discussions eventually led to an agreement between the minister and the social partners regarding some changes to that draft law that was at parliament. So the minister has an agreement with the social partners that there should be overall labor reform. That would include many or definitely more changes to our labor legislation. However, there were already some changes that the social partners and the minister have agreed to. When that was communicated, those changes that have been agreed to by the minister and the social partners were put into a draft amendment that at the time I submitted to the law, the draft law that was already at parliament. So that is the discussion that we're having. The minister on his turn on several occasions came to parliament to explain primarily the overall objective and agreement that he has with social partners about labor reform. So in front of parliament, and the minister will be in parliament on Thursday to respond to questions raised by members of parliament, is the original draft from government changing the civil code and a note of amendment presented by me that 
encompasses the changes that have already been agreed to by the minister and the social partners. So I just needed to explain what we will be having in front of us on Thursday as far as labor reform is concerned. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Telcel, when you Want more? People all across St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles credit card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to My Card today at WIB. Win yourself a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. Get your tickets for the Gold Green Car Raffle and win a brand new Toyota Prius C. Tickets only $10. Get your tickets today. The more tickets you get, the more chances you have. Friday, Sunday, October 8th. It's available at Van Gogh Bedin, Madame Estate. Big D's for the studio on the Pondville. And from all Lion members and at the Lion's Den. Get your tickets to win a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. Since the existing judicial relationship remain intact, nothing changes in the authority relations. 20. Are there measures in place to prevent regulatory capture, conflict of interest, malicious targeting out of personnel, vengeance, or just to grandstand and make name? That was answered by question number six. 21. Is this an independent functioning team? If so, describe the independence nature. The asset recovery team operates from a single location and a single shared goal. As important prerequisite for integral cooperation is the presence and participation of different organizations and discipline. The asset recovery team is absolutely not an independent team, as one of the most important features of cooperation is its interdependence. So it remains a cooperation between KPSM, Coast Guard, and the other teams. 22A, 
If the reports out of the press are believed that this team works completely outside of the law, are the persons targeted then not qualified as criminals so that the criminal code would not apply, as well as the safeguards for any person accused of a crime and penitentiary law for those convicted of crimes? What are persons within this context qualified as? In the press release issued on the day after the official start of the recovery team, the work methodology of this team was not properly reflected, as has already been emphasized. Several times in answering the above mentioned question, the asset recovery team will operate within the limits of existing St. Martin laws and regulations. 23A. Within the law, as we see from jurisprudence, laws are interpreted and circumstances of cases are taken into consideration at all times. Will this team at any time consider the circumstances of each case or will it just execute to impound, impound once someone has set the target? And B, which information is verified beforehand to set the target and how does the team know beforehand that the person or entity targeted would not be able to prove the right to property. The asset recovery team would always have to investigate the financial situation of a potential suspicious person. The team will not take away someone's property without reason or proper information gathering. Of course, the asset recovery team must be sure to inform itself regarding the financial situation of a suspect. 24. How will this team handle the fact that all the properties obtained for which persons or entities have documentation which may have been launched during a hurricane or considered that houses were built with the help of family and friends over the years, room for room, how will the actual demographics of St. Martin people be considered within the context of this undertaking? The asset recovery team focuses on criminals pursuing criminal activities for financial gains. These illegally obtained assets should be confiscated. People who do not engage in crime have nothing to fear from the asset recovery team. 25. Will the people to be appointed be knowledgeable of such local way of living, of building mortgage free over long periods of time, of rebuilding after all was lost during hurricanes? Or will this team consist of people who look at current buildings, current personal circumstances, and make decisions based on the now and not the then included? The asset recovery team consists of employees from the police force of St. Martin, the Coast Guard Customs and Tax Administration. These are people who have been living on St. Martin for many years and who are all very familiar with the cultural aspect of St. Martin. MP, the Honorable Claret Connor asks, have there been cases in Curacao where deceased people's property because of them being a suspect? From 2015 to present, a large number of actions have taken have been taken by the Integ Integrated Asset Recovery Team, Corsa. Many cars, boats, houses, and other assets have been seized. If assets are seized and sold, and government loses the case, what happens after that? Has this happened before? If so, what happened in that case? If seized assets are being sold, and later it would appear that the judge found this action unfair, then the amount of money received will be returned to the interested party. B, Integrated Asset Recovery Team Corsal does not know of any such case. C, answer to 2A. So there, there, there's no known case in Curacao where assets have been seized and the judge ruled that it was done improperly or unfairly. 
Three, in a situation where someone is taking part in a partner hand, what is there to protect the individuals in this situation? Again, all actions of the asset recovery team will be conducted in compliance with the existing legislation. Law guarantees the rights of the suspects and the existing laws and regulations. 